Hello everyone, this is Jinju at kimchimari.com and I'm going to show you how to make kimchi mandu or kimchi dumplings. And I have a way to make homemade wrappers with dough that you can make at home with flour, salt, oil, and water. Um, and I have a recipe for that uh, in the description and also online on my site. If you make your fresh dough, you divide them into little dough balls and then you can roll them out like so. Um, I just used a bottle for old fashioned way of rolling it out. And I just compared the size, um, how you can make it bigger uh, and thicker if you do it uh, at home. So let's make the filling. So I'm going to blanch some mung bean sprouts in boiling water. Just um, a quick blanch because you don't want to overcook these and they'll be cooked again with the dumplings. So then you put them in uh, cold, ice, ice cold water. You can even have ice in them. And then you're going to take them out of the water and using your hands, you want to squeeze um, a, the, most of the moisture out so um, it's not too wet. Then we're going to also squeeze the moisture out of an extra firm tofu. Um, we do all of this, you know, squeezing liquid out of the sprouts and the tofu to make sure the filling doesn't um, have too much moisture. Then we're going to chop up the uh, cooked, drained, and um, squeezed, water squeezed um, bean sprouts, like here. And we're going to add them to the bowl with the crumbled tofu. We're going to season these guys first because um, they will absorb a lot and um, it's good to sort of season them um, fully. So we're going to add some sesame oil and some fine sea salt. And we'll mix them uh, gently but fully so that the seasoning is all nicely absorbed. Now let's prepare the other ingredients that goes into our filling. So here's some flat chives, Korean chives, sometimes also called Chinese or garlic chives. They have more flat leaves, have stronger garlic flavor than the um, commonly available uh, thin chives. So we're going to chop them up as finely as you can um, and then we're going to set it aside. Then we're going to add some ground pork, ground beef. You can do all pork or all beef, but I find um, a combination works best. Then some soy sauce, some chopped garlic, also some uh, sea salt. Uh, then we're going to grate some fresh ginger. Uh, because of the pork, it's good to have that in there. Okay, and then we're going to add some freshly ground black pepper um, to this uh, mix and then we will, um, using your hands, if you wear plastic gloves, um, makes the cleaning easier. Just massage everything in so that they're all evenly mixed. Um, we want the meat to absorb all of those garlic and ginger seasonings. Okay, so now um, let's uh, work on chopping some kimchi. So I have some cabbage kimchi that I made a few weeks ago, actually a couple months ago, nicely sour and fully ripe. My kimchi is um, not as red and spicy as some of the store-bought, um, so it's up to you. Um, you can use you know, those kimchi too. Uh, it'll just come out more spicy. I kind of like my kimchi dumplings to be not too strong, uh, spite, you know, too much spicy. Okay, and then now we're going to so add the chopped chives and the chopped kimchi and mix it all together once again. Okay, so now that's all done after it's all nicely mixed and let's get started on making some mandu. Um, get a tray, sprinkle some flour so the mandu doesn't stick. And then um, here's uh, one where I use, I, I'm using a frozen wrapper that I bought from the store. This particular one is extra large size, wang. Um, so I can make those big North Korean style mandus, but it's up to you, you can make, use a smaller wrapper. We also need a little bowl of water. You can also use egg whites, 
and we need this to make sure um, the dumpling, the mandu, will seal uh, fully, completely when we're done. Okay, so we um, wet the edges with some water all around. Then we're going to add the filling and uh, you need to uh, add enough so that it, it creates a nice little bump. And notice how I started sealing from the center outwards. That way um, you make sure that it's um, evenly sealed. Sometimes if you start from one end, you may um, end up um, making it look a little lopsided. So here's another one that I'm making from the middle you start sealing and then you go outwards to each end and then um, this time I'm pleating the edges so it's a different style that um, that is usually used to make kun mandu or steam mandu um, they're uh, mostly um, with this kind of design and uh, the round one mandu uh, that I just I made the first time that's usually added to soups and toku rice cake soup so here I am sealing the edges you can see how you and you kind of also want to push out the air out as much as possible and then wet one edge um, make it round and there we go we have that classic traditional Korean style mandu and even though it, I may, you know, it may look pretty easy here, that kind of style does take a little bit of practice. And um, the best tip I can give you is you got to play with the amount of filling you have. And that makes it either look nice and pretty like these, or it may look like something's missed, you know, a little not as full it's not going to look as good so and a great way to store these is i freeze them separately like that in the tray for a few hours until the outside becomes hard and after that i can keep them in a bag like this and they're pretty rock hard at this point and um now so the simplest way to enjoy these is you just steam them in a bamboo steamer or whatever steamer you have and uh, just dip them in a little bit of vinegar soy sauce but the most traditional way is to add it to your rice cake soup, tteokguk, and make it tteokmanduguk. Um, it's one of my favorites. And um, you can just put the frozen mandu directly into your boiling soup. And there you have a wonderful meal. Well, there you go. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye.